Runway ML have dropped a new feature for Gen 3. It's video to video and it is pretty awesome. So today we're gonna to take a deep dive into this new feature. I'm gonna show you how to use it, some tips and tricks that I picked up along the way, and of course, some amazing community outputs. Okay, let's hop in. So before we go running into Gen 3 land, I did wanna just provide a little historical context as to why this is pretty awesome. So back in February of 2023, Runway ML dropped Gen 1, which was the first like widely available AI video generator. To be honest, at the time, it wasn't even a generator. It was just a stylizer. But despite those limitations, it was still a, you know, a pretty exciting time. For some stuff that I did at the time, here's some like surfing stock footage that I turned into Lego bricks. Okay, maybe not Lego bricks, maybe more like Play-Doh. Another favorite of mine was taking some cookbooks, two thermoses, and two lunchboxes and seeing if I could turn them into like a cyberpunk city. The result was, well, let's call it charming. But probably my favorite generation out of that era was taking this piece of stock footage and then running that through Gen 1 and getting this piece of footage back from it, which I know looks, you know, very simplistic, naive, uh, like PlayStation 1 by way of stop motion animation. But again, there's just something charming about it that I love. But for the most part, the feature has taken a backseat during the Gen 2 era. Well, that has finally changed and Runway have brought the V2V game to Gen 3. So kicking off with a pretty fun example, I've used this on the channel in the past. This is a clip from Starship Troopers Roughnecks. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. They're doing their part. Are you? Join the Mobile Infantry. This was a late 90s CGI show based off of one of my favorite movies. I wouldn't call it great. If I remember right, the show kind of misses the mark completely on the whole satire side of things. Let's face it, the CGI does not hold up by today's standards, but still for me, you know, nostalgia. So let's see what Gen 3 can do with it. So all we have to do is take a clip and obviously drag it into Gen 3, give it a minute or two for it to load up. From here, we issue a prompt. I'm gonna go over that in just a minute. Uh, and then after that, obviously you just hit the generate button and this is what we got. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. They're doing their part. Are you? Join the mobile infantry. And yeah, that is pretty impressive. Now, there are a couple of problems, namely that, you know, there isn't any lip movement, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. There's kind of a solve to that. But, you know, for the most part, that's kind of acting like a full remaster for a show that's like 24 years old. And yes, while there are definitely some things that you could nitpick in this Starship Troopers output, uh, again, let's go back to that Gen 1 clip that I really like, run it again, and now we have it at a full 10 seconds. Now I gave this an animated prompt mostly because again, it begins as actual video. So that just kind of made the most sense. Overall, I think the movement and design looks really, really nice here. There is a problem like you can see as their hands kind of come together, it sort of turns into like one kind of like arm sausage, I guess. The costumes did change. We're gonna talk about how to remain somewhat consistent there in just a minute. In terms of prompting, and I will have a GPT for you at some point, I just didn't have time to build one this time. Um, what I think that you should probably experiment around with is by using the presets. The presets do a fairly decent job. Well, at least some of them do. I do think that they react better when you sort of play around with them and provide more details. Uh, 3D cartoon is obviously a 3D cartoon. Claymation, the same. Dramatic is sort of your cinematic type look, um, you know, and on it goes. Uh, Retro is the only one that, I don't know, it, all it really does is add sort of a VHS stylization to it. I haven't really found that to be overly useful yet. And then moving back over to the prompt page, we have our template. So just changing out that subject line to a surfer on lava and fire, and we end up with this as an output, which isn't quite perfect, but definitely does show that the model gets the idea behind the prompt. Uh, now, one of the things that we can do is head down to our settings here, and here we have structure transformation. This is basically the, you can think of this as kind of like the control temperatures for how much your prompt is going to affect your source video. So if you crank this up to, uh, let's do 75. Uh, what I have generally found is that increments, you wanna play around between 0.75 and 0.25. It defaults at 0.50. So yeah, somewhere in that range, when you start cranking it up too high, you really start getting some terrible results. For example, going too low at 0.25 gives us this, which, you know, you can see barely the influence of the prompt on it. There's some, you know, fire shooting off of the bottom of his surfboard. 
Whereas cranking it all the way up to 100 gives us this mutant result, which I don't know, I, is this like Fury Road meets Waterworld? And as stupid as that sounds, as soon as I say it out loud, I really wanna see that movie. Now, one of my favorite techniques of late is to use the Skyglass app. This is something that I've talked about on the channel a number of times at this point, but in case you missed that, it basically does instant rotoscoping and background replacement, creating a 3D Unreal environment, like right on your phone. I detailed this all pretty in depth in a previous video that is linked down below. Uh, it's the technique that I use to do my like micro short film Tuesday. So taking some of those shots and running them through Gen 3, I mean, I was genuinely shocked. And yeah, that's pretty wild considering that all of this is me like standing right over there with my phone. Now I'll say there is a bit of a problem, namely in that, you know, Tuesday's hair here acts almost like it's like a Lego character. You know, there's like so much hairspray in it that it's just stiff as a board, but that is actually from the initial sky glass output. So we can forgive Gen 3 for that. Now, a couple of things to go over here. For one, it might take you a couple of generations before you like land on the look that you're going for. For example, in this version, uh, it gave Tuesday a like five o'clock shadow. It clearly couldn't differentiate between, you know, the PI character and the female character. This is interesting though. So in this version of it, I accidentally left a little bit of just straight black video at the end of my initial output. And so it hits the eight second mark. And then just because it's black video, I guess uh, Gen 3 takes the PI office part of the prompt and just created uh, two seconds of blank. Well, no, I actually thought it was blank video. Now that I'm seeing there's a ghost walking back there. That's kind of creepy. In another output, we went pretty much like full horror lighting here. Uh, more ghosts in the background. Oh, there's another creepy one back there. Definitely now want to do a ghost noir detective thing. That said, once you land on a shot that you actually really do like, again, no ghosts in the background here. I think that Tuesday looks really solid. Um, and you want to replicate this shot. What you want to do is hit this reuse settings button. This will repopulate this whole area with both your video clip, uh, your prompt, and most importantly, you'll want to make sure that fix seed is clicked on. Uh, from there, you can then remove your video and bring in your next shot. And then we will have all of our attributes from our previous shot. Now, in terms of taking AI generated video and running that through Gen 3, uh, sort of kit bashing the whole thing and going from synthetic to synthetic, I think that you can end up with some pretty interesting results. So taking this Quentin Tarantino inspired mid journey shot and bringing that through Luma's Dream Factory, we get this. So it has a few problems here. The face gets a little bit on the mushy side, but for the most part, I, I thought this was a pretty decent shot. So initially running that through Gen 3, we end up with this, which I think it looks pretty solid, minus the fact that we kind of lose all the background details. And there's just a ton of haze. Uh, yeah, that's one thing in the cinematic profiles. Gen 3 loves its haze. Uh, like this guy is basically working at a vape store right now. So just taking a screenshot of that initial Luma output and then running it through my Gen 3 prompt generator and then trying that out, we did end up with this, which, uh, yeah, I mean, totally looks a lot closer. Uh, there's some decoherence, obviously, there as the cars go speeding by, uh, but it's definitely closer in tone to that initial Luma output. Uh, why you would do this? I don't know. Uh, just trying stuff out. Speaking of trying stuff out, let's check out some community outputs. Uh, John Finger here shows us the power of props in Gen 3 uh, just by taking a you know, a uh, space helmet, basically popping that on with the right prompt, you know, you can basically output yourself walking on Mars or bouncing on Mars, I guess, as it would be. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Great work, John. Speaking of props, Able Art shows us exactly how much you can get away with and how much fun you can have with just some cardboard. Um, yeah, I love this idea. It just really feels super playful and kind of makes you feel like a kid. Some more video to video experimentation from Max Einhorn. Um, I don't know if that initial shot at the top is stock footage, but he very quickly turns it into a Western kind of Django themed, I guess, uh, using a Nerf gun. The great Martin Niebelong takes some outputs that he generated in the PlayStation sculpting software Dreams. It's uh, pretty remarkable what he ends up doing, uh, but then running that through Gen 3 yields some pretty amazing and cinematic results. Taking a similar idea, Mojon One takes this Cinema 4D previs of, I guess it's a Mazda, looks like a Mazda, um, and running that through Gen 3 yields 
you know, basically like step one of a commercial. Keeping with the car theme, Nicholas Newbert shows us that you can quickly like repaint and reskin your Porsche uh, right in Gen 3. And in kind of a similar idea, VQ kind of has this sort of like video in painting thing going on with Gen 3's video to video changing this model's outfit over and over again, uh, but remaining consistent with her head. I'm not sure if there's some masking involved here. There might be, um, but yeah, overall, it's a really interesting idea. And lastly, John Barron gives us this really just super fun. It's the opening of Super Mario Brothers 3 turned into clay motion. Overall, I think the potential for video to video is really wide and limited really only by your imagination. And again, this is just the V1 alpha version. We still don't have things like image referencing in here, which I think is going to end up being a real game changer. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about Gen 3's new video to video feature. Are you as excited about it as I am? In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.